Ah, the bright animation, the cute characters, the gentle breeze, the tinkling of the wind chimes, the soft sound of a flute. Now. Yes, Kenner Bridge of Spirits has a charming aesthetic. The characters are cute beyond description, so you'll have to look at them instead. Oh, look at the little guys. These guys are called Rot. Rot. You sure they're not the bad guys? Well, fortunately, they're not. They're little spirits that help Kenner on her journey to reach the mountaintop shrine. I'll return the relics to the tower. Thank you for your help, Hannah. I know it's hard to revisit the past. I'm glad you've come, Kena. Kena? I've been pronouncing it Kena. There aren't many characters in the game, and the game isn't the longest you've ever played. But given those things, it's really impressive how well realised the characters and their stories are. You don't get much time with them, but they'll stick with you for a while to come. Anyway, Kana has a magic staff she clobbers the bad guys over the head with. And honestly, it kind of feels like you're hitting them with a chair leg. The ultimate goal of the game is to clear the land of the corruption, which is everywhere. You can see it in these reddish, greyish, mainly reddish plants. Target the cores to destroy them and you can clear out a lot of the corrupted vegetation.
as you progress, you'll gain extra attacks and powers, several of which are enhanced by the rot, so keep your eye open for as many as you can find. The Rot are a bunch of scaredy cats. Every time a fight breaks out, they run away and hide. Thanks a lot, new best friends. They will help you, but only if you build your courage meter. Bash the enemy or let them bash you, and your special attacks can be used more frequently. on in the game you'll discover that it has a little flaw and when I say little I mean a big flaw. Kana stutters. I don't mean with her voice, I mean with her movement. It happens very often. I don't know what's causing it, I don't know how to stop it, but every so often she stutters. She'll be running along and just stutter and there's no reason I can see for it. At first I thought it might be the rot spawning in and blocking her movement, but that's not it, she just stutters. It's annoying when you're exploring, but it's downright dangerous in combat. You can lose valuable running away time, it can cause you to screw up the timing of sprinting attacks, causing them to fall way short of the enemy. The game involves a bit of puzzle solving here and there, usually shooting out a target with your arrows, or lobbing a bomb to levitate rocks so you can use them as a jumping platform, there's all sorts of things. There are also corrupted chests, where in order to open them, you have to beat a bunch of enemies first. Sometimes there's a timer involved, and yeah, they're a bit of a pain in the ass. some of these.
You've got mail! Yeah, even the spirit world has a postal service. For the most part, the combat works well. True, it feels like you're using a piece of 2x4, but it works. Until you run into some of the bigger enemies. They look like mini-bosses. I say look like because they actually show up later in regular fights. Most aren't actually too hard. Some though are out to beat every vital fluid you have out the nearest orifice. <laughs> then there are the area bosses. And it's round about this point the game decided to park its foot so far up my ass it was kicking me in the spleen. Area 1's boss took me 20 attempts to beat. 20! I fought Souls bosses that took fewer attempts. And for comparison's sake, Area 2's boss only took me 4 attempts to clear. So yeah, it seems to be an aberration does this boss, but still, the game isn't above sticking a firework in somewhere awkward and lighting the touch paper on you. I do like the way that each enemy type, or most of them at any rate, require a different approach. Some are best handled with the bow, others are best handled up close, some you have to use your bombs against them. You gotta kinda of puzzle out the way to defeat them. I like the way each one necessitates a slightly different approach. <laughs> Yes, if you find hats in the environment somewhere, in a chest, or locked inside a puzzle, it unlocks them at the hat shop. You can then buy the hats and stick them on the rot's head. makes them look even more adorable. <laughs> and I'm not a graphics or sound snob, but the game can be made to run at 60 frames a second, and the cutscenes always run at 30 frames a second. It is very noticeable. By the way, the cutscenes look gorgeous. Again, not a graphics snob. give Kana Bridge of Spirits a 7 out of 10. I 
iron out the stuttering and I'll be happy. It's not trying to be Game of the Year material, it's just doing its own thing. Creating a world you'd be happy to get lost in for a day or two. As long as you don't mind the occasional sudden difficulty spike. can be healed, but you cannot stay here, spirit. You must move on. You are the one who does not belong. I will never abandon my people. 